What we're going to do at this point in time is we're going to talk about diet and lifestyle because as you saw from one of my presentations, from my presentation earlier, what you eat is important. I mean, back in the 70s, there was that slogan that said, you are what you eat, and it's true. If you eat properly, you feel better. It's just as simple as that. And this is not a new concept. You know, we're talking about Hippocrates, who said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And there is a great understanding that as we eat, what we eat affects us in a very positive way. So we try to, to recommend to individuals to eat organic. Now, those of us in, in the room who are over 35 remember when food was food. And that's why it says, as your grandparents called it, it was food. Now we call it organic food as opposed to fast food or mass-produced food or this food. But food as we ate it, it when I was growing up was just healthy food. So we suggest to you that if, if at all possible, when at all possible, that you eat organic. So what is organic? Well, organic is food that hasn't been contaminated with chemicals. Uh, they are made by, they, they are grown crops by farmers whose methods use uh, conserve, uh, techniques to conserve the soil and the water. You get sustainable, nutritious products. You don't get products that are inundated by the, the contamination of antibiotics, chemicals, pesticides, etc. When you go to the store, how do you know if something's organic? Well, there are a couple of, a couple of options here. There is a label that says USDA organic, 100% organic, or 95% or more organic, or at least 70% made with organic ingredients and less than 70%. So it's a matter of reading labels. It's a matter of looking to see what's in it. Please do not confuse organic with all natural. They do not mean the same thing. It says underneath that use of USDA label is optional. So food from all major groups are available organic, poultry, meat, eggs, dairy, uh, again, no antibiotics, no growth hormones. Animal feed has to be organic. Organic fruits and vegetables are free of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. I, I, I want to point out to you that organic fruits and vegetables and grains come from fields that have been free of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides for at least three years. These foods must be grown without treated sewage sludge, which is commonly used as fertilizer. Yeah, it kind of makes you want to go like, oh, great idea when you're eating, isn't it? <laughs> Organic farmers use animal manure composted with plant materials. I saw this about sewage sludge and I went, what? Yeah, what are we really eating? We're eating chickens that are factory farmed. Okay, so they have so little room to move that in most cases what happens is the farmers are cutting off the beaks of the chickens so they don't peck at each other. This is what an, a, a factory farm looks like. You see the term free range chickens. Free range chickens means that they're out in the pasture walking around. They're not stuck together like this. One study showed that the average level of essential miner minerals was higher in organic. Organic foods contain 25%, 25% less mercury and 29% less lead. Now, we have this movement to remove organic, I'm sorry, to remove mercury fillings. Everybody wants to take their mercury fillings out. Mercury fillings are no good for you. We go, we spend a lot of money at the dentist. We're eating mercury. So the organic foods have 25% less mercury and we've removed all the lead-based paints, but we still have lead in the foods that we're eating. Fresh produce contains more vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and nutrients than large-scale farm produce. The average, uh, the average conventional apple has 20 to 30 artificial chemicals on its skin even after rinsing. How many of you have stood in front of the thing and said, okay, I washed off the apple, it's okay, it's ready to eat? 20 to 30 artificial chemicals still on the skin. This is a list called the dirty dozen and the clean 15. The dirty dozen are foods to avoid, there are 12 of them. Uh, the, the I for imported and the D for domestic. The other side, the clean 15, things that are encouraged to eat good foods, healthy foods, whole foods, and again, when you can eat organic produce and eat organic food, please try to do so.
GMO, genetically modified organisms. The GMO is an organism, an organism with the genetic material altered in a way that does not occur in nature. This one is a GMO ear of corn. Not terribly appetizing. This is a corn, as it says right here, corn made by nature. There's a great amount of, of publicity in the news today about GMOs, especially in California where so much produce is grown, and about Monsanto and Monsanto arguing not to have um, the, the foods labeled that they have GMOs because they have the chemicals that make the GMOs. Um, but when you look at these slides and you look at this kind of picture, you know, I, I can't imagine anybody who would see an ear of corn like that and really want to dive into it. In the food stores, we're talking about reading labels. Uh, the labels are, are barcoded, and the barcodes with organic start with a nine, and the conventionally grown start with a four, and genetically modified start with an eight. So if you're reading a label and you read the codes, you now see that no matter what you're reading or what they're trying to convince you, they have to be coded this way. Now, one example would be the type of strawberry was developed to be more frost tolerant. In order to do so, scientists inserted a gene from a cold ocean dwelling fish into the strawberry so that it would be more resistant to frost. So the next time you eat a strawberry, think about the fact that you're eating a strawberry laden, possibly laden, with cold water fish. Why eat organic? Well, they may be a little bit more expensive in, in certain cases, but in the long run, you're saving thousands of dollars in future medical bills, not to mention saving your life and your health. And we've come up with this slogan that says, pay now or pay later. It may cost you a little more walking through the supermarket at this time, but what you are saving in terms of dollars and cents and in terms of health benefits is really priceless. So here's 10 reasons to eat organic. We're protecting future generations, preventing soil erosion, protecting the quality of the water, we're saving energy, we're keeping chemicals off your plate, we're protecting farm workers' health, helping small farmers, supporting a true economy because it's all local farming, promoting biodiversity, and nutrient-rich food, you wind up eating less. If you've ever been uh, in, uh, given a plate of good food, you eat less food because you get full faster it is more nourishing, it is more satisfying, and if you eat less food, you gain less weight. So now we have the dreaded E word. Okay, exercise is good. 20 to 30 minutes of simple walking tones muscles, accelerates elimination of body weight, clears lymphatics, burns calories, and if you can do this outside in the sunlight, you get vitamin D because sunlight is still the best source of vitamin D. I will tell you in the office, in the, in the course of checking Vitamin levels, we look at vitamin D, and virtually every person that I check is vitamin D deficient. I, it, it is maybe one in a hundred that isn't vitamin D deficient. Also, being out in nature is calming. So what kind of exercise do you do? One that you can do and one that you will do. And it doesn't have to be bicycling, and it doesn't have to be running on a treadmill. It can be simple chair exercises you see in top or Tai Chi or anything that is moving, because you're moving and you're doing all of these things, I'm sorry, uh, all of these things that uh, get the body moving, good for the body, get the, getting the lymphatics, and all the reasons that I showed you a few, uh, a few slides ago. 10 more reasons to exercise. Keep you young, reduce infection, prevent heart attacks, uh, improve asthma, control blood sugar the more you exercise, the more therapeutic it is for diabetes, protect against cancer, combat stress, especially as I said outside, relieve hot flashes because of the calming effect of exercise, protect men's health, and prolong life. That comes from integrative nutrition. Some basic supplements. Everybody in the room, everybody that I treat, everybody that I know should take omega-3 fish oil. Because back in the days that food was food, there was omega-3 oils in the food, it is going away. Especially fast foods, processed foods, box foods, GMO modified foods, all of those things you know, have, have eliminated the fish oil. Fish oil is good for you. It is necessary for health and it lowers triglycerides. Helps the fats, probiotics every day. 
for gut health and overall health. A good multivitamin. A good multivitamin does not mean you go to the store and you buy the store brand vitamin because they are laden with other chemicals. You get a good multiple vitamin and mineral combination. Vitamin D3 to replace the vitamin D that I talked about a moment ago. Magnesium and calcium, especially in women, for bones. Digestive enzymes. Even if you eat healthy food, even if you eat organic food, even if you eat properly, okay, the body, because of all the things that we have given it for all the time we have given it, is suffering from the inability to digest properly. Digestive enzymes facilitate digestion. Hydrochloric acid actually is an interesting, is an interesting topic. We give individuals in this country H2 blockers. H2 is, is the hydrochloric acid. We give people H2 blockers. We give them Pepsid and Zantac and, and Axid and all this. And we give it to them because they have acid reflux. And they give it to babies. I mean, I, I've seen babies weeks old getting a, a, a Pepsi liquid. Okay, hydrochloric acid is good. It's necessary to break down food products. And in most instances, when you are giving someone a blocker like that, what you're doing is exactly the opposite of what you should be doing. You should be promoting the hydrochloric acid to facilitate digestion. It's backwards. Here's seven foods to avoid. We could probably spend a half hour talking about artificial sweeteners and the aspartame in them. MSG, um, monosodium glutamate, also shows up as other names such as natural flavors, not to mention Chinese food. Sugar, fructose, and simple carbohydrates, caffeine, yeast, and gluten, which we'll talk about a little more in a minute. Dairy and nightshades, tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplants. Now, I imagine some of you are looking at this and saying, okay, well, I can't have sugar, I can't have caffeine, I can't have gluten, I can't have dairy, what am I supposed to eat? Because that's my diet. <laughs> and you've already taken away the GMOs and the fast food and the processed food. So what am I supposed to eat? And there's lots of food to eat. Okay, for example, if you're not going to eat sh uh, sugar, as you shouldn't, you can eat xylitol, which is a sugar alcohol, which I'll explain in a moment. But the benefits of xylitol are it measures like sugar, it decreases oral biofilms, which makes for healthier teeth, uh, it tastes like sugar, it has oral and systemic benefits, it's actually made in the body, so you're giving the body something it's used to, it's not far into the body, it has fewer calories, okay, it's not real cheap like sugar. It costs a little bit more, okay? And if you take excess of xylitol, if you're one of those you know, 10 cup a day uh, coffee drinkers and you're taking a lot of xylitol, you run the risk of diarrhea from uh, excess xylitol. So you have to watch it in terms of GI upset. But it is a sugar alcohol, which is neither a sugar nor an alcohol, okay? And there are carbohydrates um, that resemble sugar and resemble alcohol, but they don't contain ethanol as alcoholic beverages do, and they're completely absorbed and metabolized by the body, and therefore they contribute fewer calories to the day-to-day -day, uh, caloric intake of the body. And you can get all kinds of dental products with xylitol. The, the Spry folks make uh, all of these products. Uh, they're sweetened with xylitol. Uh, they have nice flavors, and they still come peppermint. I suggest to you, by the way, if you're going to buy toothpaste, you buy it without fluoride. Uh, there are health aids um, made by X-Clear um, for nasal congestion um, instead of buying some of the over-the-counter products which really don't work in a proper way. It, when, you, when you're looking at nasal congestion, when you use the over-the-counter products, what they're doing is they're opening up the nasal pathways and over time they close back up. And then they open and they close kind of like a, an old accordion does. And really what you want to do is sequentially open them to keep them open. And you want to do it in an all-natural fashion because the steroids, uh, like Flonase, okay, open them up, but you're putting a steroid through the nasal membranes and into the body. It's the, the theory is right, keep, uh, open it and keep it open as long as you continue to use that product. But once it stops, they close back up on you. And for dry mouth relief, uh, this, uh, this is called Xylomelts. It's for people who either sleep at night with snoring problems, their mouth gets dry, you can actually put them uh, they're about the size of an aspirin. In your mouth, they actually adhere to the gum. You can put them in before you go to bed. They dissolve over about four hours. They keep your mouth moist. 
and they have very little flavor, but the flavor that they do have is very good, and it's good to keep from dry mouth relief. Dry mouth is, is one of the great reasons for dental problems, and dental issues are one of the great reasons for chronic pain. So I mentioned to you before we talk about gluten-free, and we have been for about a year telling the patients in the office to, to go gluten-free. Uh, there, are, there are books that you will see later that talk about being gluten-free. You get diminished GI symptomatology. And I will tell you that each and every one of my patients who has gone gluten-free has noticed that they feel better. Every one. It's not easy to change the way you eat. It's important to change the way you eat. It's necessary to change the way that you eat. So what is gluten? Well, gluten is a protein found in grains that can irritate and inflame and rupture the lining of the digestive tract to the point that nutrients from food don't get absorbed and sometimes at well or sometimes not at all. And so you get digestive distress, bowel problems, headaches, increased risk of colon cancer, diabetes, depression, bipolar, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we understand that gluten is an inflammatory food. We are sitting here at a conference today talking about an inflammatory disease. So why take a food product that is inflammatory in nature if you already are inflamed? That burning pain that you experience is inflammation. Gluten increases inflammation. Seems to me pretty much, much like a slam dunk. Gluten sensitivity is an autoimmune disease that creates inflammation. And it has effects in your brain, heart, joints, digestive tract. And let me step aside a second and tell you that as I mentioned earlier, there are more neurotransmitters in your stomach than in your brain. So if you're inflaming your stomach, where the neurotransmitters affect the chemical, neuro, uh, the neurotransmitters are affected and affect the chemical balance of your body and contribute to the pain and inflammation in your body, giving it gluten is making a bad situation worse. So in order to, to do this, you, you have to treat the cause, which is gluten sensitivity, for some of these diseases, which you see here. The New England Journal of Medicine listed 55 diseases that can be caused by gluten. And there, I, I won't read you the list, I'm just going to ask you to pay attention to fibromyalgia because that's going to come up a little bit later. So this is some of the 55. So gluten-free diet should, should include beans, seeds, nuts in unprocessed form, fresh eggs, fresh meats, fresh poultry, preferably organic or free range, preferably organic fruits and vegetables, preferably organic dairy products, and a whole bunch of grains that you see down at the bottom. It should not include, <laughs> I know there's somebody out there saying, okay, now, I can't eat processed foods, I can't eat fast foods, I can't eat GMO foods, he took away sugar, okay, can't drink caffeine, and now he's taking away my beer. <laughs> and he's taking away the cakes and the pies and the candy. Oh my God, I have nothing to eat. Wine actually is, is not as much an issue, and especially organic wine. Okay, you've seen enough, right? <laughs> All right, so one of the other things that we do is we check B vitamins. Um, we've learned that low levels of B12, thiamine, riboflavin, they're all B vitamins, B6, have been associated with mood disorders, and excessive B6 has been shown to create pain. Now, I've had patients come in and say, I'm taking a whole slew of vitamins, and a lot of it is duplicative. They're taking multivitamins, and then they're taking supplemental B1, and supplemental B2, and supplemental B6, and if you overload yourself with B6, you can actually make the pain worse. So it really is important to look at the vitamin levels. The, the, the brain requires B vitamins for repair and maintenance of brain and neurotransmitter and adrenal functions, and stress, there we are again, stress, causes B vitamins to be quickly depleted. A couple of nutritional supplements that you may or may not have heard of, 5-HTP, DLPA, um, methionine, fish oil, uh, which I talked about earlier at some length, 
Axomod ibuprofen and B6 zinc and manganese aid in pain relief. So for the few of you people who have come up to me during the course of the day today and say, I don't react well to conventional medicines. I want to do this naturally. You know, I, I, I can't take certain drugs. There are all natural supplements that you can take that act very similar to the, the over-the-counter or prescription medications and do it without the adverse effects or side effects that we have come to, to understand that are associated with those drugs, okay? Another thing in terms of getting healthy, detoxification. Uh, detoxification, you can, you can do something to work up a sweat every day. Sweating is a natural way to detoxify. There are infrared saunas. You can dry brush skin regularly uh, to help shed old skin and stimulate lymphatic flow. You can take a fiber supplement containing both soluble and insoluble fiber, which helps the body secrete excess estrogen and other substances. Drink at least half your body weight in water a day. Practice deep breathing. Now we have in the office um, detoxification packs and programs. Um, we, we, we want to thank, I want to take a minute and thank the Designs for Health folks who provided us with a lot of information and some of the uh, uh, bars out there that look and taste almost like candy but really are nutritional and healthy bars. But there are protocols for short detoxifications and long detoxifications. We have an infrared sauna in the office for detoxification because we recognize that the combination of detoxification and exercise and healthy eating and all these things really contribute to a healthy individual. You can't treat one facet of this disease and expect everybody to get better. It's a collaborative effort of a lot of people starting with you, the individual. It's how you eat, it's how you act, it's how you think, it's what you are, are contributing to your own well-being. And detoxification periodically is a very important part of this, especially if you're not adhering to a, a pristine diet, if you're not eating the way you're supposed to eat, if you're not exercising the way you're supposed to, whether it's because you don't or whether it's because you can't. I did it again. <laughs> Somebody is sitting in the room and saying, how do you eliminate stress? Okay, and the answer is you don't eliminate stress. I have long said with people, you know, it's about how you handle stress. You know, stress is inevitable. There is no one I've ever met and or will ever meet that doesn't have some level of stress. Um, anger, and, and, and we talked earlier in the, the morning, I talked about, you know, getting mad. Anger is healthy uh, and it's therapeutic. It is purging, it is cleansing. Be angry and then move on. Move on and think positively. I read you the Optimist Creed, okay? Eat right, deal with the stress in a calm, focused, direct fashion because stress is going to happen no matter what you do. I mean, it is just a way of our lives. And the increase in stress that we have all come to know in this 21st century, okay, has contributed to adrenal burnout and the adrenal burnout has contributed to more and more pain and more and more disease. So you see, the more I talk, the more everything intertwines. I put this picture up uh, of, of a breast thermogram for two reasons. The first reason is this. I want, I want just to give you a, a sort of momentary discussion about breast thermography. We are told that women over the age of 40 or 50, depending upon where you read, uh, should have a mammogram every year. And any of you that suffer from RSD, CRPS, understand that the compression of the breast, even if you don't have the disease, is extremely painful. Please understand that the compression measures out at 50 pounds of weight on the breast. 5-0, 50 pounds. Uh, and I use the example of laying three bowling balls on a breast, which is kind of a ghastly thought, but that's the weight of 50 pounds. And so a lot of women do not have diagnostic testing of the breast because they simply cannot tolerate a mammogram. Now it is not my place to stand here and tell you to have a mammogram or not to have a mammogram. But I can tell you that thermography, which is the use of infrared imaging, looks at the physiologic responses of the breast and the body without contacting the breast. And it gives you an early warning sign as to whether or not there is complication or problem with the, the breast and allows you to be proactive in your own health concerns. So to say I can't have any testing of the breast because I can't stand the pain 
there is a diagnostic test that gives you information about breast disease without the radiation and without the contact. The, the pictures that you see right here are pictures of a woman who had a breast thermogram. The top pictures are the before and the bottom pictures are the after. Now, for those of you who have never seen a breast thermogram, uh, there are circles that are, that are taken here, and the circles measure the temperatures from one side of the body to the other, which is the premise of thermography. It is understood that the human body is symmetrical. The left side of you and the right side of you is within reason the same. There are certain parameters. And so looking at the right side of a female body and the left side, they should be the same. And looking at the vasculature, they should be similar, recognizing that every woman is going to have some blood vessels. So this lady came in with a significantly abnormal thermogram with increased blood vessels and increased heat in the right breast. And rather than having so, some um, other things done, she opted to go on a diet, lose some weight, change her lifestyle, begin to exercise, and do all the things that I spent the last 30 or 40 minutes talking about. And six months after these pictures, she came back and these were her pictures. Um, you know, this is the same woman. I, I'm frequently asked, well, maybe it's a different person. This is exactly the same woman six months later with the implementation of changes. I put this picture up to show you that the changes that I am suggesting to you that you make today not only work because I say so, but work because we see them. We see them in people who have less swelling, have less redness, have more energy, who sleep better, who have better thermograms, and it goes on and on and on. This is a visual representation of what changes in diet and lifestyle can do for you. So we've put these together as some healthy guidelines, some of which I've already said. Uh, I'll, I'll let you read through them. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the elimination of the wrong kinds of foods and chemicals. It has to do with relaxation. It has to do with natural approaches to healthcare when you can, stress uh, relaxation, uh, relationships. And it really goes hand in hand with the optimist creed from the last discussion of having a mindset of dedicating yourself to positivity and getting better. I have patients who come into the office and say to me, my RSD is flaring up today, and I will say to them, it's not yours. Don't own it. Don't possess it. The RSD is flaring up. The disease is flaring up. But it's not yours. And if you own it and you possess it, it becomes more a part of you. Some of the, some of the recommended readings, um, fabulous stuff. Uh, the Diet and Mood, Mood Cure by Julia Ross, uh, Sugar, Anti-Inflammation, uh, Clean Gut, Hungry for Health by Susan Silverstein, um, who will be doing a webinar with us um, in October, I think. Um, Wheat Belly, which is the book that we've recommended for gluten-free diets. Um, this one, which I'm currently reading myself, uh, a chiropractic physician by the name of Zode Koi wrote a book about adrenal fatigue. Uh, I read through this, and when you read through the book, it's just unbelievable because I'm, I'm not sure I know anybody in my life who doesn't have adrenal fatigue to some level. Um, and the Weston Price was a dentist who went around the world uh, looking at dentition and um, coming to the understanding that, that the diet that people um, consumed and the level of stress and the way they lived their lives had a great deal to do with the way their teeth looked, and that had a great deal to do with the healthiness of those individuals. So here's the mantra for this. Today I will find balance in my life. I will reveal my potential by feeling and being healthy, by embracing all the elements that are on my path to well-being, by striving for the best expression of me. I will find greater connectedness to the world and those I love, Today I will live intentionally. Sounds pretty simple, huh? We have a website um, which talks about better health. We have monthly uh, webinars um, which are archived for those of you who might have missed what pre preceded today. Um, we have um, 
newsletters that go out every month on an email. It's the only email you get a month if you sign up for it. You don't get inundated. We have a website that talks about these. 